Hello everybody, welcome to the Joe Show where today I review the DCC equipped Bachman Spectrum HO scale GE 45 ton switch locomotive. Hello everybody, I'm Joel and today I've got a pretty special video for you guys in the essence that it is quite special to me and I hope that you guys will enjoy the video as well because today I'm reviewing the DCC equipped HO scale Bachman Spectrum GE 45 ton switcher locomotive which is uh, it's very special to me in the essence that it is my very first DCC equipped locomotive um, but as of right now it is not sound equipped as I have already opened it and things along those lines as I am getting to this review a little bit late according to when I got it because I was supposed to review this when I got the Digitrax Zephyr Express which was quite a while back but I'm just getting to this a little bit late but no problem at least I'm reviewing it now and I'm very excited to share this with you guys so let's go ahead and start by a package overview so here on the front you can see some diagrams it has a red packaging and then here in the background you can see there are more diagrams and then it says um, spectrum in some nice golden print up there on the top left and then here on the top of the packaging you can see it says spectrum and then you've got a golden read right there if you want to pause and read and then here on my right side, you've got the item information, like this is a HOGE 45 ton switcher DCC. And then here on my left side, you've got Spectrum, and then another read there if you want to pause. And my box is faded, so if you get this, um, it will be this color. It will not be that color. This is just faded because I got this off of eBay as a new product. And then there is the bottom. It is very similar to the top, if not identical. And then here on the rear, it says Bachman Trains. And now that's the way to run a railroad. And then you got the nice Bachman logo there, as well as some diagrams of a steam locomotive. And then this looks kind of like a old uh, diesel locomotive. And then the, then uh, here on the bottom right, you've got another read. So there's that, and then usually you would um, get something sharp and undo a piece of tape there. And a piece of tape right along here, like you can kind of see the residue circle there. I took it off because I didn't want them to get, to get all weird and collect all dust and stuff. So usually you just take a knife and cut those, or you could peel them off. I cut them because I really didn't want to harm the packaging any more than it already was with the fading. But anyway, we can go ahead and open this by simply just lifting off this top cover. And then there's nothing on this side in case you were wondering. So now we can set that back there. And then this whole entire uh, pouch can pop out just like that. And then now the locomotive is in that casing. But before I do that, you can see that this um, the rear of the packaging does actually have some stuff in it. And I didn't get all of it. Hopefully I got all of it. And then you can see the diagrams are still back there. You've got what looks like a Hudson to me, I'm not exactly sure, and then you've got like a Amtrak locomotive up there from what it looks like. I'm calling it an Amtrak locomotive because I have an HO scale Amtrak diesel locomotive that looks like that, so I'm just going to call it that. Then see the diagram is copied down onto here to cover the instructions and all of the information, or the owner's manual, if you will. And then, let's go ahead and take a close and quick look at this, so you can see this is Bachman DCC on board, and then here's a read you can pause and go through that if you like and then you've got well Bachman logo down there and then it says made or I thought that said made in China but it says printed in China and then when we open this up we've got our exploded diagram of the locomotive so I'll briefly pan through this stuff there you go and then here on the other side you've got some more information on the decoder there's that and then the rear, this is a much more detailed exploded diagram going into every little nick and cranny when it comes to detail. So if anything breaks, you've got a port number. And if, well, yeah, if anything breaks, you can go to the website and I believe you can reorder every single item here. So it is quite literally impossible to not repair the locomotive. And then all right here, you've got Another owner's manual, this is the one year warranty, which had expired before I even bought the locomotive. And then here you can pause and read if you like, there's that section, and then there is that section. So there's those two papers, and then these ones are kind of the more um, traditional ones that you see in everything. This is an important notice, 
Once again, you can pause and read if you like. It's talking about the easy command system, which I don't use that. I use some uh, Digitrax, the Zephyr Express. And then here you've got um, the cards that you get with everything. There's your address if you need to send an email or anything along those lines. And then, yeah, so there are all of the papers. And now I'm going to very gently put all this back in. And then, well, we'll go ahead and set the locomotive casing back in there. And we'll go ahead and take the locomotive out right now. So you don't actually have to take out all those plastic pieces. You just have to take out this top layer. And then that can come off. And then here's the locomotive. I found that the best part to grab it is by the plows right down the bottom. And then you can kind of just set it down and lift it by the cab from there. And you've just got a little foam pad up there on the top as well as some stuff to protect the locomotive from the plastic so that it does not get scratched which is probably a good thing if you ask me and then now if you like you can well throw the box away but i quite think literally nobody's going to do that but the box there you go you have it and now the locomotive let's go ahead and zoom down onto the table and let's take a closer look at the locomotive so here we are, and here is the Bachman Spectrum HO Scale DCC equipped GE45 ton switcher locomotive, and I really do like this. I got it as a birthday present a while ago, as there was one particular thing about this locomotive that I really liked, and it's for the same reason I like steam locomotives. It's simply because it had these uh, weight connecting rods on the wheels, which when it is in motion, um, these spin around and it looks very nice, which I will demonstrate this in motion later in the video. But for now, let's go ahead and take a nice detailed look at the locomotive starting up at the front. So I'll go ahead and zoom in on this front coupler. So here you can see we've just got the Bachman knuckle coupler right there, and then you've got your MU hose hanging below. You've got the Bach, or not the Bachman, but you've got your um, coupler cut lever right there, or your, um, coupler cut rod and whichever you want to call it a lever or a rod and then built and blow there on your um, bottom running plate you've got some um, yellow striping as well as on the bottom of the step and then if we move up to the platform where these rails are you can see that they are all done in yellow they are all molded and separate pieces as you can see if I tug on this a little bit you can see that they are pulling out of the cab a little bit right back here where my finger is you can see that they just slipped in there so all of these are just separate little plastic pieces and as i said if you break anything on here you can look at your parts diagram get the part number and reorder it from the website or wherever you want to that actually has it and then up here you've got your well one of the two directional headlights and then up here you've got a plate this does not open nothing's in there it's just part of the molding and then here on the front if i can get some light you can see that the grill is in fact graded which is also molded into the detailing and then here you can see that there are some very um, visible um, readings right there so there hopefully you can see there is one that says fire and then the other one I can't clearly see so I found my shaky hand I'm trying to get the camera to get this in focus but you can see they are very um, visible and they're very finely printed so no complaints there and then moving up there from there you can see there's one of our two exhausts sticking up right in front of the cab and then moving back here's the cab right here in the center and then you have got you have got some silver um, outline around the center windows and then this is repeated on the alternate side and here we actually have a hand um, painted crew figure in there and then you have a little bit of um, control panel detailing in there. I'm not sure if you can see But there is a little box right about there that does have some painted gauges on it And then I didn't mention earlier, but on this side there is your bell right there right next to a couple of the wheel rate weights and then here on the alternate side it is pretty much a similar you've got your other directional headlight and then you've got the other uh, graded grill right there and then another panel which does not open and then here is your other grill and then the rest of the locomotive is pretty basic and then here on the bottom like any dcc equipped locomotive piece of hair there you can see it says dcc on board right there behind the wheel 
right there. And then here is where you would um, put your uh, speaker if you would like to. So this little panel uh, just clips off like that. And then there is where your speaker would go. And then you would have to purchase a new decoder that supports the sound value. But anyway, there is where you'd put your um, speaker if you would like to. As if you purchase this brand new, it, it does not come with the sound value as I believe I got it as just the DCC um, control so you can control it like a DCC locomotive without the um, sound value so there is the overview of the locomotive now let's go ahead and set it up on some track and see how you operate it with DCC okay so I've got some easy tracks set up with my DCC Digitrack Zephyr and then I have this wired up to there so I can use the easy track with it I'll plug this in and you can see that the Digitrack Zephyr will go to the address 45 because I have given the address to this as 45 as it is a 45 ton locomotive so here you can see that the light is on um, which I'll go ahead and turn this towards you to show you that it is a directional light so I'll go ahead and flip this to forward and this light closest to us should turn on there you can see it just turned on there's that real light and well actually that would be the front hole light and now if I switch around and switch to reverse you can see that our light popped on there and that is why I had been saying they were directional lights and now let's go ahead and raise the throttle a little bit well I have to put in forward first so there is the locomotive in DCC which it feels like something's derailed and it is not and then you can see there those little uh, connecting rods in action so there is the locomotive sitting there I've got it in forward right now with the front light on and I'll go ahead and give it some speed and you guys can hopefully see those connecting rods in action as you can see there they're alternating and it gets a bit more fluent when it's at a bit of a higher speed and I'll go ahead and switch it to reverse and show you guys what that's like so you can see those connecting rods are alternating and that is the main reason why I had gotten this locomotive because it gave me the the vibes of a steam locomotive. So that is the locomotive in motion and I did the box overview, I did a detailed look over, went over the manual for you guys and well just did a small little demonstration for you guys with the DCC um, equipped well did your track Zephyr and you can use DC with this but I really don't recommend it as well obviously you would burn out your decoder but I really do like this locomotive and with that being said Hmm, very interesting. I should give this guy a shout out. Yeah, I should give this guy a shout out. Okay, so quick shout out to the cringe kid 7690. He's a train related content creator. So if you like trains, you can probably pop over to his channel with the first link in the description and go ahead and see what all he has. He has coaster fan tributes, Union Pacific tributes, Roblox music videos or video, Northern Eternal Northern and Santa Fe and Immortal Train videos, Union Pacific videos. I see lots of SD70s, which let, let's be um, truthful. That's one of the most common. Yeah, these are locomotives of today, so you can reel in the bed any train channel is going to have it on it. You can't avoid it. Yeah, sure, it burns fossil fuels, but whatever. So, uh, go ahead and pop over to his channel, and if you want to know what it's going to look like before you go there, here's what it's going to look like. So, as I said, you can see lots of train-related content. There's a Roblox video and all kinds of things, so please do pop over to his channel and check out the Cajon Pass 1994 train crash video and go to the end, and you can see that he has given me a shout out, so it's only fair that I give him a shout out, and if you go to the playing with an RC court in the snow video, you can see that whole entire conversation that me and the cringe kid had where he asked me for a shout out, I say yeah, he says I'll give you one too, woohoo, and then it's all a nice happy situation, if you guys enjoyed the video.